And you, and you, and you, and you were there. Some of it wasn't very nice, but most of it was beautiful. Hello, hello. Howdy, Brian. How are you? I'm doing great. And we're back. We are recording on April 29th. And so for music listeners everywhere, I would like to wish the great Willie Nelson a happy 89th birthday today. Oh, yeah. Good call. Yeah, I saw that this morning online. You know, it was his birthday. That's unbelievable. And he treated us to a reverse uh, birthday present with a brand new album today. So, yeah. And weirdly, he has like 130 studio studio albums or something crazy like that. It's way over 100. Yep. I'll be listening to the new one after we're done recording. So nice. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Happy birthday, Willie. Yeah. Happy birthday. And we're back again for another Dream Idiots. And uh, thanks for your comments and for listening. And please rate and subscribe and share and let us know what you think on whatever platform you are using. So uh, I go first this time, right, Brian? You are correct. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to start off with a scintillating topic. Um, Brian, do you remember your first phone number? I do actually. Yeah. Do you remember your first area code? Mm-hmm. Because today I want to talk about area codes because <laughs> I'm that kind of guy and I'm fascinated with numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, you may recall that San Antonio used to have the 512 area code Absolutely. for a long time. And then it switched to 210 in 1992 or 93. So I had to switch area codes. You didn't because you moved to Austin about that time. So you got right. the 512 area code. I remember because I had a bunch of business cards printed mm-hmm. and the shift happened while they were being printed. So I had to go through and hand write and you know, two one zero on all my business cards. Right. So I want to talk today about an article from Wikipedia and something I've looked up the original North American area code list and how it got started, because it's pretty interesting stuff uh, for those of us who like numbers. Um, AT&T started in 1947 the North American numbering plan for the United States and Canada. And they had what they call numbering plan areas. Because when you think about uh, comparing this to say zip codes, zip codes definitely have regions attached, correct? Yeah, I mean, sure. Right. So Texas has got a bunch of sevens in it. The Rocky Mountain area where I live has eights. Uh, out in New York, it starts with ones. Zeros and ones, yeah. yeah. So uh, area codes are something entirely different. There were 77 original North North uh, number planning areas for the U.S. and nine to Canada, which I think is the same ratio of National Hockey League teams, American (laughs) to Canada today. 48 states for the U.S. back then in 1947. And how did they how did they dish these out? Do you think the different numbering plans? No idea. Well, first of all, they did it by population. 14 states had more than one NPA. New York had five. Makes sense, right? Population center. Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Texas had four numbering plans each. California, Iowa, Michigan had three each. Indiana, Kansas, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Missouri, Wisconsin had two each. The rest of the states had one apiece. Uh, Ontario and Quebec had two each. And the rest of the provinces in Canada all had one numbering plan area each, with the exception of the maritime provinces. This would be New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia. They all had one together called 902. So let's see. Can you name the original four area codes for Texas? Uh, 915 was going to be West Texas. Very good. 713 was East Texas, Houston. Yep. Uh, North Texas, Dallas, was it 214? Yes, sir. Got one more. And then 512. Yes, sir. Very good. Um, They have something in common, those four letters, don't they? Middle number is one. Middle number is one. That's right. Um, So what they did with these is the number assignment was set so that similar number patterns were scattered across the map so as not to confuse people. That's why you have 212 in New York, 213 in LA, 214 in Texas. This is very different for zip codes that are all bunched together. Right Now, sometimes they do abut states, like, for example, 215 is in Northeast Ohio, but 216 is in Southeast Pennsylvania, but they're still got that whole state of Pennsylvania in between them, right? So uh, here's a little trick. If you're living in a state and you're wondering, oh, is one of my states, you know, which, where did my state fall in this? 
if a state has or had at one point only one area code for the entire state, this is a zero and this is the middle digit. So 0, 702 for Nevada, 303 for here in Colorado is the original area code, 402 for Nebraska, 307 for Wyoming, and so forth and so on, 801 for Utah where I lived. All states that had original multiple numbering plan areas, such as Texas, New York, Illinois, and the other ones I mentioned, have that middle digit of one. California, for example, has three. 213 for Southern California, including LA, 415 for Central California, including the Bay Area and Sacramento, uh, and Sacramento, and 916 for the very tip northern part of the state. Um, it's interesting for me to see how we have changed from all of these different area codes, of course, with the explosion of cell phones and how that's changed. I mean, Houston has, I don't even know how many area codes at this point. San yeah, Antonio like, uh, is, three or four, right? Oh, at least San Antonio right. is getting split yet again, I think next year, Okay, just with the sheer explosion of area codes. But this is one of those things that I think about when I look at, like when people complain about the way things work and the way things happen, the fact that someone sat down and figured this out a long time ago, it's worked pretty well for what, 75 years. Right. Sure. I mean, pretty well. Is that right? 75? Anyway, um, it's worked really great, as, as do zip codes for the most part. It's one of those things we kind of take for granted and don't think about is to, you know, someone somewhere sat down and said, okay, how can we figure this out that makes the most sense for the most people and uh, makes a system work that we all need at this point? Telephone numbering systems, same thing, same thing as zip codes. So the next time you're out and about, you know, and you're looking at, at a you know, at, a, at an old phone book or you, you find an old, if they still exist, an old pay phone, uh, just take into consideration that at one point, you know, we were dealing with a very limited number of area codes. And as we expanded, we had to come up, come up with ways to compensate for that and come up with new ways to think about how do we organize ourselves when it comes to, uh, comes to communication via mail through the zip codes or through telephone communications with area codes. Right, so right. there you go. There's my uh, numbers game story for the week. How area codes have worked in the past. Yeah, there you go. No, nice. Uh, that that totally, totally remind, remind, uh, reminds me of. I think there's an episode of Seinfeld where they, where they, or you know, where someone gives Elaine her, you know, his number, and she realizes it, you know, it's not, it's not two one two. It's a, it's the new, the quote unquote new area code, and so she immediately throws it away because she's. <laughs> he assumes that he lives on Long Island or something and realizes, oh, oh, no, it's, it's, oh, it's Manhattan, but it's no. no. <laughs> yeah. And to that, w one of the things I was going to mention too is, is uh, in addition to that, think about the old um, numbering system where you could, you used letter substitutions for the first two letters of your. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, Cl Klondike is the one they always used in the yeah, movies, yeah. Klondike 5, because that comes out to 555. Um, of course, Butterfield 8, the movie with. Um, with Liz Taylor, where the, the Butterfield extension is the hot extension to have. I mean, that's <laughs> that, 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 right. that yeah. sense of um, uh, classicism, even within, mm. even within your number prefix that you use, just that, and that is kind of cool. I've kind of wanted to dump that on someone, give them the area code and then do some kind of number thing for your first two prefix numbers right, just to right. see what happens. <laughs> right. um, that's one of those things you just don't hear anymore, but yeah, there we go. Area codes and how they work. You could, you could reach me at MF something. You mean, <laughs> yeah, incorporate, exactly. incorporate your, your initials into it. Uh, it also reminds me of there. Um, there's a comedian named Gary Gullman, um, who is, uh, hilarious. If you never, you know, just go, go, I urge you to go on YouTube and look up Gary Gullman, G U L M A N. He has a bit about the, um, post office and when they, I'm not sure. Was how that many him? Ago. Yeah. Was that the, does the does the the state abbreviation yes and oh, he's got uh, the, he's got the saucy secretary that's yeah, taking yeah. The dotty oh, that is, <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so oh, you know, they're, they're, they're talk at length about about having to you know pull together a crack team of, of folks to to you know do all 50 states and this couldn't possibly take too long and then they, then they realize alaska alabama oh shit <laughs> 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 it becomes way more problematic than they they ever you know, thought so very very funny stuff
Yeah, and that's always, that always cracks me up when people start arguing when they're trying to send something to a state, particularly when you get to the M's, because we have so many states that start with M. Right. Yeah, and M, yeah, yeah. Just, and no, in, in Minnesota, M N, in Maine is M, you know, over over fighting over that. So right. yeah, good stuff. Very cool. All right. Well, you know, uh, you know what time it is. Uh we are we do have this week yet another curse word. Are you ready? Yes, I am. It is time for the Dream Idiots Curse Word of the Week. All right. So after a couple pretty, you know, off color uh, curse words, we're shifting gears a little bit to something that's a little bit more, um, I don't know, innocuous or something. But a, a word that, that stumbled across my radar screen recently. I wondered, what, how did that word even come about? So here you go. Nami, Pambi, lacking energy, strength, or courage feeble or effeminate in behavior or expression did you, did you understand that yeah namby pamby namby pamby so not Rod, really cursed. rodney rodney our cursing robot yeah rodney yeah, exactly yeah <laughs> um namby pamby that uh, it sounds english correct okay and it sounds mm-hmm. like it comes from like not quite Victorian times, I'm guessing. Um, Actually, before. We're at, right. I, like before that, where it's, uh, I mean, it's got to sound like babyish to it and nappies and <laughs> being childlike. Well, namby, pamby, baby. It's got a babyish quality to the way it's, to the way it comes off. Yeah. That um, does, yeah. And of course, meaning that, that you're a wimp or you're, um, you're unable to take criticism or handle change or deal with adversity, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that, yes, that's, that's pretty much spot on in terms of the definition. Um, the, the, the genesis of it though, which, which I, you know, made me laugh. Uh, there actually is a, um, when I was reading about it, uh, one article referred to Namby Pamby as a hit poem, like, you know, back in the, <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, like it was on the hit parade in the 40s or something um but uh, so 1725 is it was a lengthy poem called namby pamby so first you know very early part of the 18th century uh, so well before you know TikTok and uh casey Kasem, this was a hit poem and um basically it was a, kind of a kind of a takedown kind of a um is it a diss set- track it's it's a lesser known bgs lp um so basically it was a satire so there uh i mean i'm still blown away whenever i read about any any sort of peculiar sort of picky controversy you know in the 18th century when i'm sorry why aren't you focused on just staying alive um the guy that wrote this wash your hands (laughs) right you know you know quit shitting where you eat um (laughs) So a poet named uh, Henry, Carey, Henry Carey wrote this as a send up of this style of poetry. So there was a, uh, another poet named Ambrose Phillips and Namby Pamby is a lengthy satire, you know, uh, parody basically of a style of poetry put forth by Ambrose Phillips, which were basically every line of the poem has seven syllables. Um, and, you know, this was sort of a weird matter of consternation you know, among quote conservative poets, unquote, you know, all the proof you ever need that conservative, you know, conservatives can ruin absolutely fucking everything if, if they put their mind to it. <laughs> um, so, you know, a hundred years before good old, you know, Billy shakes was doing the whole iambic pentameter, but that was, that apparently was fine. But if you had seven syllables in each line of um, your poem, you were, it, it was very much designed, you know, targeted or seemed to be meant for children and this guy was mocked for using seven syllables versus 10 or, so, or some other number. I'm not sure how, how old um, Haiku is. Haiku is 575. or so, Yeah, I think it's 575 syllables per line. Um, yeah, because it's 17 total. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, and so the, 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 um, basically the opening of this poem reads... All ye poets of the age, all ye whittlings of the stage, learn your jingles to reform, crop your numbers and conform. Let your little verses flow gently, sweetly, row by row. Let the verse, the subject fit, 